Fall protection is a simple concept in theory, but complicated in practice. Equipment can easily be categorized in general groups, but within each group we find a wide range of diversity in respect to product design, performance, and compatibility. In this video, we will provide an overview of the primary types of fall protection products, as well as the applications in which these products are used. At the end of this video, you should be familiar with the following questions and concepts. What are the basic components of a complete fall protection system? Who are the most common users of fall protection? What is an anchorage connector, harness, lanyard, and a PFAS? At its most basic level, fall protection can be broken down into ABC. Anchors, body wear, connectors. These are the three components needed to assemble a complete personal fall arrest system, also referred to as a PFAS. And while the PFAS is our central focus in this video, before we move on, it's important to remember the D of our ABCs with this fourth component relating to the rescue of a fallen worker. Prior to beginning work, it is essential to understand the job site rescue plan and to know what to do in the event of a fall. Falling can result in injury, so the prompt recovery of a fallen worker is key to keeping workers as safe as possible. The job site safety manager should ensure that all workers are sufficiently informed and trained on all site safety policies. Anchorage Connector The anchorage connector component of the personal fall arrest system is the base of the system. It is what you connect to and is the first component in your system that begins to arrest your fall. Anchorage connectors are installed directly onto the structure. The three most common structural materials are wood, metal, and concrete. The structural material is also referred to as the substrate. Keep in mind, not all anchors can be installed on all substrate types. Always refer to the instruction manual for the specifics on product compatibility and use. An important technicality to address is between the terms anchor and anchorage connector. Anchor is the structure itself. In this photo, it is the concrete. Anchorage connector is the piece of equipment that attaches to the structure. This is the equipment you actually connect to. Another type of anchor is called a horizontal lifeline. A horizontal lifeline consists of a heavy-duty rope or cable that is connected between two independent anchorage connectors. Horizontal lifelines function as an extended anchor that can be connected to by multiple workers. Bodywear. Bodywear is the piece of fall protection equipment worn by the worker. For the purpose of fall protection applications where the risk exists for the user to fall over an edge, a full body harness is the only piece of equipment permitted. The primary components of a full body harness are webbing, buckles, and D-rings. Webbing makes up the bulk of the harness. Besides color, there is generally little difference between harness webbing functionality. Some exceptions are the contrasting core webbing of the Guardian Velocity series. The contrasting core webbing indicates wear and aids in inspection. Surface Tech webbing, which offers protection against contamination, Fire-resistant webbing, which protects against exposure to flame. Some harnesses also offer additional accessories such as padding or hydration packs for worker comfort. There are three types of buckles, pass-through, quick connect, and tongue buckle. D-rings are where the connector attaches to the harness. Different D-rings are employed in different fall protection applications. Here are the potential D-ring locations. Dorsal. Sternal. Side D-rings. 
and the shoulder. Every full body harness is designed with a dorsal D-ring. This is because a dorsal D-ring is the only permitted attachment location for fall arrest applications. A fall arrest application is one in which the potential exists for a worker to fall over the edge. Connector. The connector component of a PFAS is the equipment that attaches the anchorage connector to the full body harness. Pictured here are some examples of connectors. Connectors are also designed with a variety of hook configurations. Hooks determine which anchorage connectors are compatible with the connector. The most common hook types are snap hooks, rebar hooks, and carabiners. Connectors primarily function to do two things, absorbing forces of fall arrests in the event of a fall and limiting the maximum working radius around the anchor points. Here we see a shock absorbing connector in action. Watch as the test weight drops and the lanyard arrests its fall. The connecting component plays a key role in not only stopping the fall, but in reducing harm caused by the fall itself. A worker is subjected to a dramatic jolting force at the moment their fall is arrested, so the shock absorption of the connector is essential. Connectors can be broken down into a few basic categories. Lanyards, self-retracting lifelines, also known as SRLs, and vertical lifelines. Lanyards are the most common type of connector and fall into one of two subcategories, shock absorbing and non-shock absorbing. They are typically made from polyester, nylon webbing, or cable in lengths up to six feet. Shock absorbing lanyards have either an internal or external component that absorbs arrest forces in the event of a fall. These lanyards may be used in fall arrest where a worker is placed at risk of falling from height. Non-shock absorbing lanyards do not have the shock absorbing component and can only be used in fall restraint applications. In fall restraint, the fully extended length of the connector will not allow the user to reach any fall hazard. Note that all lanyards may be used in fall restraint, but only shock absorbing lanyards may be used in fall arrest. Self-retracting lifelines are manufactured at various lengths and function by allowing the lifeline to feed out of and retract back into the unit housing as the worker moves. SRLs are manufactured with either webbing or steel lifelines and are commonly available in lengths ranging from 6 feet to 100 feet. SRLs can be broken into two main subcategories, leading edge and non-leading edge. A leading edge SRL may be used in applications where the risk exists for the lifeline to impact the edge of the hazard in the event of a fall. Non-leading edge compatible SRLs must never be used in leading edge applications. Such use could result in damage to the lifeline or the worker being subject to excessively high forces of fall arrest. The last type of connector we'll look at is a vertical lifeline. A vertical lifeline consists of a heavy-duty rope that attaches to an anchorage connector. The worker moves along the rope using a type of connector called a fall arrester, most commonly a rope grab or a positioning device, which locks onto the rope in the event of a fall. Now let's take a look at some examples of ABCs in use. Can you identify the ABCs in this photo? This concludes the ABCs of fall protection. Thank you for watching and stay safe up there.